What's up, y'all? This is your girl, J. Renee with Prison Riot Radio. I hope that you're doing well. This evening, we got a brother that goes by the name Zom G on the line. We're going to holler at him. He does a lot of things. He got his hand in a lot of different pots. But we're going to holler at him so he can tell us more about his craft and some of the things that he has going on. All right. What's up, bro? How you doing? Good evening. Uh, good evening, Lady J. How you doing? I'm all right. And they hold my head down. All right, for sure. I appreciate you um, taking this time to interview with us. Um, you're a busy man. You got a lot of different things, you know, that you got going on. So we're going to jump right into it, all right? Yeah. All right, so um, let the people have, like, a little, you know, a short little intro of you, like where you're from and things like that. Well, you know, I'm, I was born in Pennsylvania. I was born in Harrisburg, but I was raised in Baltimore. You know, Baltimore, Maryland, but um, you know, I I I am a I'm I'm a horror artist slash actor. I do um um I do horror. You know, um, I decided to do horror out of all things because I felt as though the black man was being misrepresented in the culture, um, and within the horror industry. And um, you know, the gangster rap was oversaturated. You know, everybody does rap. Everybody raps. You know, and you know, it's so easy to me because it's a part of my lifestyle. I wanted to do something that challenged my creativity, as well as um do something that meant well to the people. And every time I watched horror movies, and I was always fascinated with horror movies as a child, and every time I watched a horror movie, mm-hmm. um, the black man was always being misrepresented. And, it, and they also didn't play hip hop or rap music, rap music and horror in mm-hmm. movies and horror cinema. They didn't play too much rap music. And um, if they did play rap music, it, was, it wasn't scaring you like, rock music was, or punk music, or opera, would it wasn't scary enough. Um, so I decided to be that face for um, our people, you know, for our black people, and give a better representation of the gangster, or a better representation of the black man within the horror industry. Okay. And I just did it. I studied. I studied on how to scare people. You know the. You know from everything from the tones of voice to the volumes to the beat production, um, engineering, um, different things. And you know, I just started to. I just started to blow. I just started to do a lot of different. You know, projects, a lot of different movies, acting. Um, become. Um, put on soundtracks to some of the films and video games and um, TV commercials and movies, you know. So, you know, I think it takes it takes a lot to, you know, make these type of films. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize that. So, you know, I definitely appreciate you, you know, giving that that genre, you know, a little flair with people of our color, you know. Um, I know that you told me that you are um, a SAG accredited actor. Can you tell us what that is and what like a little bit more exactly what that's about? Well, um, I started I started with doing conventions like uh, Comic Cons. I started performing for Comic Cons, um, um, horror conventions, marijuana conventions, sex conventions, and tattoo conventions. I started performing for them and um, meeting a lot of different celebrities. You know, signing autographs while I'm near there, signing autographs, and they started you know liking who I was and what I represented it what I represented and put me in a lot of their films. You know, I started becoming friends with, um, you know, like the person who played Jason in Friday the 13th, uh, Candyman, Tony Todd, the dude that played Candyman, um, the dude that played Michael Myers, uh, some of the walking uh, TV show from the Walking Dead cast members, like Arnie Singleton, um, and a lot of different other people. Um, um, Sid Haig from Devil's Rejects, um, uh, the Machete, Danny Trejo, Tom Savini, you know, um, Ari Lehman, different horror representative, Ken, Ken Forey, you know, big, big name people within the horror industry, and they really liked who, what I represented and who I was, so they started bringing me a part of their films, you know, um, put me in their films and put my music in their films, um, I was in the movie Z-Con, um, which is a movie about, um, 
is a movie about a bunch of kids at a convention when um, at a um, Comic Con convention when the um, a zombie outbreak happened, and so you get to see a lot of your superheroes turn into zombies, mm -hmm. like Spider Man, yeah, like Spider Man, Captain America, Superman, and all these different kind of uh, characters turned into zombies while these little kids fight their way through a Comic Con of zombies. Mm -hmm. um, I got into that. I, I got into uh, a, a, it's not really a soft porn, but you know, it's a, it started a lot of porn stars. A, a movie called Mills vs. Zombies. I played a gangster in that and um, came out with a song called Zilf. Uh, zombies I like to fuck that they put on the um, soundtrack. Um, and you know, different different films. Um, Rotten Riders, which is a cross between The Walking Dead and um, Sons of Anarchy. Um, who, with, where I actually met, um, uh, what's his name, Bushwick Bill, and um, I was the last one to record a song with him for the soundtrack to that movie before he died, mm -hmm. which we're actually getting ready to put out while I'm sitting here in prison. We're getting ready to release a, um, a, um, an album of all my unreleased music while I'm in prison. And one of the songs on that album is a song I got with Bushwick Bill, and I was the last one to record a song with him um, before he passed away. Yeah, you know, um, God bless the dead. You know, shout out to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, um, you know, puts me in the mind to ask about your music. Um, tell us something about your music, you know. Um, I know that you've been in some of these soundtracks for these movies, but what got you into creating music? Well, I've always been, you know, pop culture, you know, has always, like, intrigued me since a youth. And, um... You know, I started doing music since a kid. My um, my my father, my stepfather, when I was little, used to DJ at a bar called Bryce's in Park Heights. I don't think Bryce's is there no more, but um, it was a bar in Park Heights on uh, Rice's Town Road, and I think uh, 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 what was it, Garrison? Um, but um, it was a bar called Bryce's. He used to DJ there, and I used to always he. Was, as a kid, he used to bring me down there when I wasn't even supposed to be in there, and I used to he used to give me the microphone. I used to rap and stuff um, at the slow bar there, and um, we had fun, and it was it was something that I always wanted to do. So I grew up with gangster rap. You know, I grew up with gangster rap. Um, I was signed to a different different labels, um, Baker Boys Entertainment with Young Leak um, from uh, the song Shake It and Jiggle It. You know, Shake It and Jiggle It, Shake It and Jiggle It. You know, uh, with K Swift. Um, I was signed with them. I opened up for BG, Chris Brown, a lot of other different people, you know, as a gangster rapper. But um, it really wasn't, it wasn't challenging for me. It was, it was easy, it was, it, you know, and then everybody else was doing it, so it was oversaturated, and I just felt as though it was too much competition. Everybody wanted to be a gangster rapper, mm -hmm. and it was just too much, you know. Um, so I opened my own lane. I did something that, you know, nobody was doing, and um, wanted to be something that, you know, our community needed. So I just said, you know, I buckled down and challenged myself to sit and create a character mm -hmm. um, that's a vampire that controls a whole bunch of zombies. That's why they call me Zombie, because not that I'm a I'm a um, zombie. What it is is that I'm actually a vampire, but I control I control zombies, and that's how the underworld is ran. In the underworld, vampires control zombies. So um, they call me Zom G because I'm the G of the zombies, but I'm really a vampire. So, um, you know, to create this character, create his swag, you know, his temperament, you know, his, um, you know, his, uh, you know, the whole thing from the way he raps, the way he talks, the, you know, the things he talks about. About, you know, and bring it into a reality state so it can be uh, related, you know what I mean, so people can relate to it, you know, it was challenging, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it, it made me think, it, it helped me with, you know, developing, you know, my craft, and, you know, I, I loved it, and I love it, it's, 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 it's just great to be different, and not to be put in a box with everybody else, and think outside the box, and be my own person, you know. Yeah, I can definitely appreciate that, you know, and um, yeah. I definitely love the story, and you definitely got a lot going, you know, very, very, very hands-on, very, you know, you got you got your hand out here in the atmosphere for sure. So what's the next thing yeah. with you? Um, do you have any writing that you're doing? 
and things like that? Yeah, um, yeah. Right now, I got a um, I got a book we're working on um, called um, Jesus Was a Zombie, a Christian Horror Story. Um, I come from a lot of gang banging, and um, I've been the blood of Pyro. I've been Pyro for over 20, 23 years. And um, I just recently, over the last year, um, stopped gangbanging. You know, I folded my flag up, and um, I'm not going to say drop my flag because I didn't get a dishonorable discharge. Like, my, I put in so much work over the years that my brother, my brothers in the prison system that um, I'm in and, you know, gangbanging with decided to let me go because I've done a lot. You know, I've been a part of, you know, the organization for so long and it's time for me to make a positive name for myself and stand out on my own too. So I folded my flag up and stopped banging and, um, you know, um, and it was due to Jesus. I gave my life to, to the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and changed my life around. You know, and um, I came, I'm writing a book right now, um, that's due to come out soon once I'm finished and get it published and everything called Jesus Was a Zombie, A Christian Horror Story. And I'm also working on a, um, I'm also working on a um, movie script called Hood Bad. Mm -hmm. um, Hood Bad is about a vampire um, who creates a drug that turns a bunch of people, when they do the drug, into zombies. And he's able to control these zombies to send them out on hits. You know what I mean? The different things of that nature for different organizations within the hood. You know, the, the Bloods, the Cribs, you know, the Spanish gangs, MS-13s, and all that other stuff. He's licensed, licensing hits for these different organizations, but instead of sending hitmen, his hitmen are zombies. So these waves of zombies have come and kill these different peoples, and you know, you got um, different... Um, you know, two two people who's trying to stop what's going on. So it's a it's a it's an exciting um, read as I'm writing it. You know, and um, we're turning it into a movie when I come home. So you know, I'm excited about that. You know, we're working on a tennis shoe. You know, we um well we're working on a lot of different things. We got a marijuana edible. You know that we're working on. We have um like I said more music. I have music with um many different artists, uh, Natasha Mosley from um, Cash Money Records um, with Lil Wayne and them, one of their mm -hmm. artists, Natasha Mosley, she's a singer, I got a song with her, you know, um, so we're planning on putting that out as well. Um, a couple members, I got a song with a couple members from the Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang mm -hmm. Clan, so um, we're putting that out, you know, so um, we're just working, you know, even from even from the prison, you know, so I, I created a... a in the prison as far as, you know, working towards bettering my community, um, I created a nonprofit uh, youth organization geared to helping the youth um, stop gang banging, and it's called um, GRIP, a gang, a gang Response Intervention Project, um, which is being ran here in the prison system right now, um, which um, helps um, youth here in the prison system that want to stop gang banging mm -hmm. and um, get away from that violent life culture, you know, um, we help them, we mentor them, we mentor them, thank, we mentor them, take them through healing circles, um, you know, tattoo removals and cover-ups, mm -hmm. um, all different type of different things that we're, we're doing to help them curve the image of the gangster within them and become better people, job training, housing, you know, um, you know, getting out of the neighborhoods and getting away from the people that, you know, associated with gangs so they can better themselves. And um, create a better way of thinking, you know, um, you know, um, form and um, you know, help them create decision, better decision making skills, you know, um, so they can better themselves outside of the prison system. So it starts here in the prison system, and you know, um, we're turning it into a nonprofit on the streets. So that's my way of giving back. So you know, bro, you definitely got your hands in a lot of pots. Um, I appreciate the things that you are doing, you know, as far as giving Thank back, you. you know, and I um, yeah. congratulate you for all the things that you've accomplished and that you're working towards. So I, I can't help but Thank to ask you, yeah, for sure, what keeps you motivated through all of this, especially being incarcerated? Um, well, my my mother passed away from COVID um, last year, and um, mm -hmm. it 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 struck a chord in me um, real hard. And being locked up for murder, 
um, really hurt me, you know, to the point to where so I even went gray, you know what I mean? Like, some of, you know, I, you know I, my hair even turned salt and pepper, you know, so I, it did break me. I did get I did get broken down to my lowest of low. I felt like giving up, you know, I get, I get hit with some time and, you know, I lose my mother, I lose my grandmother, I lose my family, um, you know, and, you know, it, 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 I was broken down, but with, 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 with kept me motivated was the Lord. You know, reading the Bible and going through church service, I, I actually became one of the leaders of the youth ministry here at MCIJ. And um, I helped bring other brothers to the to the Lord um, in the youth ministry. And um, it, because it changed my life, and I felt as though it's only right that I share that share that with you know other brothers who you know might be hurting because the time they got out or their girl left them, they lost their kids or lost family members or whatever. And you know sometimes we have a tendency to turn to violence. You know at times like that. You know you know. Um, and I was one. You know, but um, a brother had brought me to church, and it just it made me cry. Like I remember the first church service because my mom didn't raise me up in the church. I didn't grow up um, going to church. That's one thing she kept me away from. I didn't have to go to church on Sunday mornings, and I didn't have to go to funerals when people would die. She would keep me away from stuff like that. Um, and, you know, so my first uh, time going to church and really constantly was here in prison. And, um, you know, I, you know, I've been baptized, I got baptized, and, you know, I changed my life around. So it's the Lord who I give all the honor and glory to, um, because without him, I couldn't, I couldn't be here. You know, I wouldn't be here on the phone with you. You know, this really hurt me. I was at the height of my career. Yeah. I was at the height of my career. I was doing everything. I was the next to blow in Baltimore. You know, I'm with all the right people, yeah. with all of the celebrities. I got stories for days with different celebrities, you know, that I, things that I've done. And, you know, movies I was in and people as I, I was around. I got a, a music video on, um, on YouTube, you know, that was produced and starring Zaytoven. Zaytoven was my producer, you know, and everybody knows Zaytoven. He produced for Gucci Man and Amigos and everybody else in Atlanta. You know, so I was actually in a mix. And for me to catch a murder, catch a body and just up and disappear, it destroyed me. It destroyed me. So, um, I I had to fall to my lowest of lows. I had to fall to my lowest of lows to build myself back up again. And I owe it all to the Lord. I owe it all to the Lord. All right, bro. You know, you definitely got my condolences with your moms. You know, Thank you. I've um I've I been there, it. and I can definitely relate. Yeah. It's a it hit a little different when it's your mama. You know, so I can definitely yeah, understand that. Yeah. And I'm glad that you know yeah. that everything that was there for you to help you get through that was there and and still is there you know so you want much love on that so um i don't know how much time we got left of course you're welcome so i want to make sure that the people can connect with you so please let everyone know um how they can connect with you how they can see your work uh find your music and everything like that yeah, you um just just Google search me. My name is um Waze Aaron Lamar Waze Crankfield. You spell Waze W Y Z A E Crankfield C R A N K F I E L D. If you Google, if you Google Waze Crankfield, you know um all the different movies that I'm a part of. Some are, some aren't there because they're low budget. Some of the movies aren't there, so what you'll have to do is go on to my um, social media, which is Zom G. If you Google search Zom G, just Google search Zom G, Z O M B G, and um, you know you can find my um, social media site. Just active right now. My website's not active because I'm in prison, but 
currently my manager is um, keeping my fans and reactive with um, interactive with you know um, everything that's going on with me. So he's controlling my um, social media sites right now. So um, you see recent pictures of me, pictures of me with different celebrities on my social media account. You know, um, Instagram, same thing. He's um, cheating. You know, Facebook, my like page, which is my favorite, with um, his um, G. You know, so just you know, look into it and see. You know, you'll see a lot that I got going on. I, um, I got a lot of positive things going on, and um, stay tuned. Hashtag freeze arm um, G. All right, for sure, bro. So before I let you go, you got any shout outs that you want to do? Um. Yeah, I, I just want to shout out, I want to shout out the youth, man, because, you know, there's a lot going on in the city right now, and, um, you know, I, I feel as though, you know, the city needs a uh, scare to change them, you know, and, and I need to get home, you know, um, I want to shout out my kids, I want to shout out my girl, you know, I want to shout out, you know, um, to all my, all, all my fallen and dearly departed that I wasn't able to be there for them. And I'm sorry. I want to um, apologize to the victim's family, you know, um, the other person that I had um, took out of their life, you know, let them know that I'm extremely sorry for what I've done. And um, give them my condolences and, and, you know, hope that I can um, help make some changes. And by that alone, um, I didn't want to, um, you know, say too much about it, you know, but. Um, the proceeds from the book um, Jesus Was a Zombie is going to the victim's family. You know, that's something that I was going from the heart. I didn't tell them and I didn't um, I didn't make it known because I wrote them an apology letter and part of my modification is a mediation between me and the victim's family where I get to apologize to them and tell them what actually happened um, in the murder case and um, because I'm getting ready to get my sentences get ready to get modified. So um, we're doing a mediation with the victim's family first before my modification date. And, um, but I'm not going to tell them. You have 60 seconds remaining. But I'm just going from the heart that, um, mm. you know, um, the proceeds from the book is going to the victim's family. Okay, for sure, bro. Again, I want to tell you, I, wanna, I, I appreciate you for taking this time to sit with us and, you know, letting us know and learn more about you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Shout out to prisonwide.com.